رباه عفوك إني للنور مدة يداي نزعت أسرار قلبي وجبت ألقي أسا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونشعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ورضي الله عن أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد فعن أبي هريرة قال رضي الله عنه قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters, one day Abu Huraira narrated this hadith. He said one day we were around the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said من يأخذ من أمتي خمس خصال فيعمل بهن أو يعلمهن من يعمل بهن Who from my ummah is going to take five traits such that he will act according to them or teach someone who will act according to the five characteristics So Abu Huraira immediately jumped on the opportunity and he said, Ana ya Rasulullah, I, I want those five characteristics that I can act upon or teach someone who can act upon those five characteristics. These five characteristics are summarized in this beautiful hadith. This entire khutbah is about one hadith in which we will go over the five characteristics that make us a true Muslim. قال فأخذ بيدي فعدهن فيها ثم قال so then the prophet grabbed my hand and he started counting the five on my hand and number one اتقى مح اتقى المحارم تكون أعبد الناس protect yourself from the haram things and if you do it تكون أعبد الناس you will be the best of worshippers Number two, وَرْضَى بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكَ تَكُنْ أَغْنَ النَّاسِ Be content with what Allah has given you, what Allah has decreed for you. And if you do it, you will be the richest of the people. Number three, وَأَحْسِنْ إِلَى جَارِكْ تَكُنْ مُؤْمِنًا And be good to your neighbor. And if you do, you will be a true believer. Number four, وَأَحِبَّ لِلنَّاسِ مَا تُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِكْ تَكُنْ مُسْلِمًا And love for people what you love for yourself. And if you do it, you will be a true Muslim. Number five, and this one kind of got me thinking, and I'll explain it. وَلَا تُكْثِرِ الضَّحِكْ فَإِنَّ كَثْرَةَ الضَّحِكْ تُمِيتُ الْقَلْبِ And do not engage in extreme, excessive laughter. Because extreme, excessive laughter puts the heart to death. And I will explain what that means. That's it. 
Those are the five things that make one a true Muslim believer. That's it. The khutbah is done. This is the whole khutbah. The rest of the khutbah is an explanation by using Quran and Hadith of each one of those five points. And I hope that we all can take these home and learn them and give it to others who need them, especially our families. Let's look at point number one. Protect yourself from doing haram things. And if you do, you will be the best of worshippers. This raises many questions. What are the maharim? What are the haram things? There are two types of maharim. Two types of haram things. Big haram things and small haram things. The big haram things are called kabair. The small haram things are called sagair. Allah says in the Quran, "In tajtanibu kabair ma tunhaun anhu, nukafir ankum, nukafir ankum sayyatikum." If you avoid the big haram things, then Allah will erase. Your smaller haram things. So, what is a big haram thing and what is a small? Kabira, there are two ways, two definitions provided by our great ulama. First definition I present to you is a more theoretical, abstract definition, and the second definition is more practical. So, listen to this khutbah and put away your cell phone. Do not touch that cell phone while you're in the khutbah. So, What's, What's a big, big haram, haram sin? sin, sin, sin. Abstract, Abstract definition, definition according to our ulama is Hiya kullu dhambin khatamahu Allahu bi narin aw ghadabin aw la'natin aw azabin wa wa'idin fil Qur'an Any sin in the Qur'an or Hadith which is associated with or linked with or followed up with threat of hellfire or anger of Allah or curse of Allah or angels or, or prophets or punishment or a threat that's a big sin anytime you see in the Quran the threat of hellfire mentioned anger of Allah mentioned curse punishment or a th another threat that's a big sin so that's a theoretical abstract definition what is a more specific detailed definition for someone like me, a simple person, to understand and relate to? So the ulama, our great ulama, have mentioned 12 big sins. And I will list them out for you one by one. Remember them. Come to me after the khutbah and take a picture of the list of 12 big sins. Learn it. Teach it to others. Number one, a shirk. A shirk is the greatest sin, which is to not believe that there's only one God, to believe that Jesus is Son. That's shirk. We are Muslims. We don't believe that God has a father or son. There are no partners. Allah is one and only one. The second great sin is al-qatl, killing. Number three, great sin, az-zina, fornication, adultery. Number four great sin, al-khamr, alcohol. That also includes any intoxicants, drugs, anything that takes away your intellect. Number five great sin, al-riba, usury, or what they now call interest. Interest on loan, for example. Taking or giving. Riba, big sin. Number six big sin, aklu mal al yatim devouring the property or wealth of an orphan. Number seven big sin, uququl walidain, disobeying your parents or disrespecting is a big sin. No one loves you more than your parents. No one has your best interests better than your parents. Listen to your parents. Do what they say. If your parents are happy, Allah is happy with you. 
If you have made your parents angry, Allah is angry with you. This is clearly mentioned in a hadith. Number eight big sin, shahada to zur, false testimony, giving false testimony in front of a judge or a police or other person of authority. Number nine big sin, a sihr, black magic. Not talking about small magical tricks, those cute tricks. Magic that's called black magic, which is a sihr in Arabic is a type of magic where a person intends to do harm to another person. Number 10 big sin, al-qimar, gambling, lottery, gambling, big sin. Number 11 big sin, as-sariqa, stealing. Number 12, and there are many others, but I will stop at number 12. Which is working corruption on earth, such as violent crimes, disrupting public safety and security, highway robbery, killing, terrorism. These are all big sins. The Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, if you pray Jum'ah, if you pray five daily prayers, and if you pray from one Jummah to another Jummah, and if you fast from one Ramadan to another Ramadan, then everything in between from the small sins will be forgiven. So that was number one, which is what? Ittaqil maharim takun a'batan nas. Protect yourself from maharim, haram things, and you'll be the best of worshippers. I have only given you the big sins, the smaller sins. There's no time for that. Number two, Be content with what Allah has given you. Some people have more than you. Some people have more beauty, more power, more strength, more money, better car. Be content with what Allah has given you. And if you do so, You will be the richest of the people. Be content. Be content. No capitalism where you want more and more and more because the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said if a human being had a valley full of gold. If I had a valley full of gold, I'm, 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 I'm leaving my job, I'm done. I'm just going to have fun all day sitting on a beach. No. If a person has one valley full of gold, you think they'll be content? The Prophet said, uh-uh, that, that person will want a second valley full of gold. There's no limit to our desires. The Prophet وسلم, said, don't, you know, don't be impressed. Don't say, well, I'm a Muslim, but the kafir has more money, more power, more wealth. Because Allah says through the words of the Prophet وسلم, the hadith says that if this dunya, the world and all of that's in it was equal to even the wing of a small mosquito. The value of everything in the world, trillions and trillions of dollars worth of wealth is not even equal to the wing, wing of a mosquito. Had it been so, Allah would not have given a kafir anything from it. Two types of greedy people according to the messenger Two types of greedy people will never be satiated. The more they get, he wants more. The more she gets, she wants more. Two types of greedy people. One is good, quote-unquote, greedy person. The other one is the bad, greedy person. What are they according to hadith? Manhumun fil ilm la yashba'u minhu wa manhumun fil dunya la yashba'u minhu. One who is greedy for knowledge, quote unquote, greedy for knowledge, that person will ne be, never be satisfied. The more I learn the Quran, the more you learn the Quran, the more you want. The Quran is unlimited wisdom and information and knowledge. People spend 30, 40, 50 years studying Quran and they don't even know 1% of the Quran. It's a vast ocean. That's a good greedy person. We should be greedy for knowledge. We should spend some time every day or at least once a week attending gatherings of knowledge. The second type of greedy person is one who's chasing the world 
الدنيا الدنيا is understood by our ulama to mean money, power, real estate, cattle, cars, gold, houses, women for men and men for women and fame. These are things that are called a dunya. You can chase the dunya for the rest of your life. You will not be satisfied. You'll want more and more and more and more and more miserable you will become. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "A dunya mal'una." The world is cursed. Mal'un ma fiha illa dhikr Allah Taala wa ma walahu wa aliban wa mutalima. Everything in this world is cursed. Stop chasing it, except for four things. Number one, dhikr Allah Taala, remembering Allah, which is Quran. Quran is 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 is, is also called dhikr. And two, anything that follows from the Quran, which is like hadith and sunnah and other wisdoms. And three, a scholar, aliman. And if you can't be a scholar, at least be the fourth one, which is student, mutaalliman. If you're not a student, if you're not a scholar, if you're not doing dhikr, if you're not following the Sharia and sunnah, then everything else is cursed. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أجمعين. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Not much time left, so I'll try to speed it up. Number three, the third thing that makes us a true believer is وأحسن إلى جارك تكون مؤمنا and be good to your neighbor. You will be a true believer. We all have neighbors. Many of us most likely probably have neighbors that are non-Muslims. Be good to them. It doesn't say you have to be the good. You have to be good to the neighbor that's Muslim. Be good to all your Muslim. And there's a dangerous warning. One day, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he said, "Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min." He said to the Sahaba. I swear to God, I swear by Allah, He does not believe. I swear by Allah, He does not believe. I swear by Allah, He does not believe. He said it three times. They said, "Who?" He said, "The one whose neighbor is not safe from his evil." Make sure you're not annoying or bothering your neighbor by doing anything. So those are three out of the five. We have two more to go, inshallah. In five minutes, I have to finish two more. There's a lot to say, but I'll try to summarize. Number one was what? Ittaqil maharim. Stay away from the haram things, and you will be the best of worshippers. Number two, be content with what Allah has given you, and you'll be rich, richest. Number three, be good to your neighbor. Number four, wa ahibbal nas ma tuhibbul nafsik takun muslima. Love for others, what you love for yourself, and you will be a true Muslim. The Prophet is reported to have said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه." None of you truly believes until he loves for his fellow human being what he loves for himself. And I'm using he pronoun. The she is included because in Arabic this construction includes both he and she. None of you truly believes until she loves for her fellow human beings what she loves for herself. And number five, لا تكثر الضحك فإن كثرة الضحك تميت القلب. This one got me thinking. I didn't really understand it. I had to think a lot and research a lot. Let me translate first. It will sound a little strange. It will sound a little weird. But when I explain, inshallah, it will make sense. The Prophet said, "Don't engage in too much laughing. Why? Because too much laughing puts the heart to death. Okay, what does that mean? Puts the heart to death. And how? Does he mean literally, or does he mean metaphorically? Is this to be taken literally, hakikatan, or is this metaphorical, majazan?" You know, in Quran and Sunnah, there are things that are hakikatan and things that are majazan. Things are literally true, and there are things that are not literally. Don't take them literally; they're metaphorical. So I started thinking, 
does he mean metaphorically the heart will die or does he mean literally the heart will die? And here's what I came to conclude. Both literally and metaphorically, this hadith can be taken to be true. If it's taken literally, well, I have to talk to a medical doctor. Can laughing too much put your heart to death? And this is what I found According to British Medical Journal in 2013, researchers from the universities of Oxford and Birmingham found that laughing too hard can in some cases lead to ruptures, heart ruptures. Now, what's interesting, very simple Google search, I found at least five comedians, and this is very common, comedians, they're always laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing, right? Do comedians die of heart attacks? Five comedians on the stage while they were performing, joking and laughing, their heart died. They collapsed on the stage. You can Google this. You'll find many, many, many examples of comedians dying of heart attack. So I said, Subhanallah, this is literally true. Sadaqa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What about the spiritual angle, the metaphorical angle? Because I'm always interested in majaz. The spiritual, the spiritual angle, angle is that, that it, it removes, removes when a person is always laughing, always joking, people will stop taking you seriously, okay? But also, it makes you someone who has lost khushur, khushur, which is humility and submissiveness, and your heart will start on a journey to spiritual death. And once khushur is gone, what comes in the heart? Takabbur, arrogance comes in. And Allah has given us a very serious warning about takabbur, arrogance. He said, Alaysa fi jahannama mathwal lil mutakabbirin? Isn't there a home in jahannam for arrogant people? Rhetorical question. Of course, there is. But, 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 but I want, I want to, balance to balance it out. It, this doesn't this mean we start frowning and never laugh and we're always serious and angry. No, no. the Prophet smiled a lot. Even smiling to, your, to the face of your brother is sadaqah. This does not mean we become all upset, angry and serious and frowning. No, 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 no. That's going too far. This is telling us don't engage in extreme, excessive laughter all the time. So that's it. Five characteristics according to this hadith that make us a true Muslim. What are they? Number one, ittaqil maharim takun a'bad nas Protect yourself from maharim, haram things, and you will be the best of worshippers. Number two, warla bima qasam Allahu lak takun aghna nas Be content with what Allah has written for you, decreed for you, and you will be the richest you will be richer than Bill Gates. You will be richer than Elon Musk. You will be the richest of the people. Number three, and do good to your neighbor and you will be a true believer. Number four, and love for other people. What you love for yourself, you will be a true Muslim. And finally, number five, and do not engage in excessive laughter because excessive laughter puts the heart to death. Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sadaqa Jibreel ameen alayhi salam. Wa sadaqa Allah ta'ala. May Allah give us all tawfiq to act upon this comprehensive hadith. And may Allah bless us all with practicing, memorizing, and passing this on to our friends, family, everyone. These five characteristics. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Come to me after the khutbah and you can take a picture of the five. Learn them, memorize them, teach them to, to the children, and take it to others. Let's conclude this khutbah, inshallah, with a dua for our brothers in Palestine. Allahumma inna naj'aluka fi nuhurihim wa na'udhu bika min shururihim Ya Allah, we ask you to defend us from them as we are incapable. Ya Allah, we seek refuge in you from the evil of this criminal Zionist tyrannical shayateen. 
اللهم عليك بهم فإنهم لا يعجزونك أو الله go get them because they cannot overpower you ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين أو الله pour on us patience make us firmly rooted give us victory over the disbelieving nation آمين اللهم خفف عن إخواننا Oh Allah, make things easy for our brothers. Fi Filastin, wa Kashmir, wa Turkistan al-Sharqiya, wa Sudan, wa Sham, wa Lebanon, wa Libya, wa Hind, wa Faransa. وفي كل مكان يا الله help our brothers in Palestine, in Turkmenistan, East Turkmenistan, in Sudan, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Libya, in India, and in in France. Bless us with victory and patience, يا الله. آمين يا رب العالمين. اللهم أنزل عليهم مطر الرزق والبركة والرحمة والخير. آمين. اللهم أنزل عليهم مطر الرزق والرحمة والبركة والخير. اللهم أنزل عليهم السكينة وانصرهم على أعدائهم وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالإحسان والعدل وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة